This is a Model H Triumph, made in 1922. I first came across it in 1961 in a village called Eurostoke, where it was up for sale for £20. Uh, our mortgage at that time was £14 a month, and I was on 20 pence or 4 shillings an hour. So we couldn't afford this motorbike. It was bought by a friend of mine in Trowbridge. He kept it for 25 years, so that brought it up to 1980. I managed to purchase it off of him in 1980, and here it is exactly the same as when he had it and when it came from Aristotle. It's never been done up. Uh, we had it running last year. At the moment, it doesn't run at all. Uh, I've, I've lost, or somehow, and it must be me, there should be a nut that goes down on the... This is the petrol tap, by the way, to turn it on. Um, I've lost a little gland nut on there, or it's gone, but it must be me because it's only me who's taken it out. Um, and having said that, I fitted new footrests to it last year. They've got on them sunbeam, but now somebody makes triumph pattern ones. Um, I don't think this they will be changed, but this was um, sunbeam ones were identical to triumph ones, so and it was only triumph ones available. I've never taken it on the public road, not running. It wants a new drive belt. There's a new drive belt in my garage, waiting to be fitted. The original uh, license holder is on it, and it was last used in. Uh, own, hang on. Oh, this isn't the old. This isn't the last license. It says oh nine ninety seven. Uh, this hasn't been used on the public road, to my knowledge, for a long while. So, what pressure are you going to blow these up to? Forty pounds. Good job you got the compressor. Oh, good luck. Well, you have to set yourself up to do it, don't you? Yeah. Certainly better than a foot pump. Yeah, I've done a lot of I've done a lot of foot pumping because I haven't got I have got I have now got a little compressor in the loft. But before I didn't have a compressor in the loft. So I've done a tremendous amount of foot pumping. Yeah, I have. I've done a hell of a lot of foot pumping. And that's a day when I'm at the foot pumping. Because it's me who gets tired. These were well known in the 20s as a trusty triumph because the first models was made in 1912, 1913. And they were used in the war as dispatch riders' bikes. In fact, we went to a pub at... Uh, what was the name of that pub? Just outside of Stroud. Just out, we went to a pub just outside of Stroud this morning where a friend of mine drove his in, his 1914 EX Dispatch Riders bike, Model H Triumph again, drove it in from Chippenham to there, which is 40 miles each way. Um, having said that, it got such a good reputation in the war that after the war, lots of these bikes were sold off for civilian use. To my knowledge, this is not a, um, uh, this is not a War Department motorbike. This is a civilian uh, Model H Triumph, built in 1922 by the Triumph Manufacturing Company. But having said that, it's in its original condition. I've owned it now 45 years. A few things are not standard on it, and that is the pannier boxes should have a leather front. 
and they've got it's a steel pannier box and as you can see it's still got some of the old stuff on or inside of it but it should have a leather fronted box and it shouldn't be made of galvanized uh, the belt on here is the original belt but it's badly worn this is the original belt yeah right? this is its original belt I'll, I'll turn the wheel around now and you'll see you'll see here where the lug where the it's gone Hang on. there it is there's the wear On the light in, we have settling light in. This is the headlamp. This is the generator. It has two ways. It feeds the headlight and it also feeds the backlight by having a T piece in the in the uh, the gas tube. So as there's gas going to the backlight and gas going to the front light. If you have lights fitted, the rules are that they should work. Otherwise, you put a blanking piece across the front and then they're termed as ornamental. But these lights did work originally some years ago. Um, it's got carbide, um, it's got sidecar lug, side lugs on this side. You can see they're already built into the bike. So as, if you had a sidecar, the lug is already here to take the to take the sidecar fitted to it. Starting from the front of the bike, because of the uh, conditions of the road in 1922, when this bike was manufactured, heavily balanced front mud guard to catch all the road mud. Because in them days, lots of the road were only puddled in stone, and in some cases, no tarmac at them at all. So we have heavily balanced mud guards back and front, and that's to stop the mud flowing around. Engine is single cylinder, 550cc, five, so that's a um, quite a powerful single cylinder engine. It's got the carburetor um, is made by Triumphs, which is typical to Triumphs with two bodies as against one. We've got an enclosed uh, case here covering from engine to clutch. Three speed gearbox, top speed is 45 miles an hour, sensible travelling speed would be 35 to 40, top speed as I say is about 45 miles an hour. Brakes are push bike pattern, just the same as on a push bike on the front wheel. So brakes are push bike pattern on the front wheel and rim pattern on the back, rubbing into the rim on the back. So there we are, brakes aren't much good for this, uh, it's now 207 nearly, um, in 1925 road conditions were a lot different, not much vehicles about, more cows on the road and more animals on the road, but having said all that, um, ridden with care and sensibly, and it makes you look ahead to see what's liable to stop you, you're more conscious of where you're travelling because the brakes aren't a lot of good and in wet weather you just uh, rather not be out in. I'm looking now at the Triumph set of forks with its spring damper here. Now so on some of these bikes there's a guy who makes a tube that goes over here and it's nickel plated. It didn't used to be a tube on there at all, it was always like this. This particular bracket was nickel plated as you can see but that was nickel plated in the early days and it's quite a good spring fork but as I say you can now get a tube that goes over the top which is nickel plated but originally the spring was never nickel plated only this bracket was nickel plated no springing at all on the back tire pressures 40 pounds per square inch up to 50 but not down to 20 at all because of the nature of the tyre, which is beaded edge, if you ride with 20 pounds PSI, you can twist the tyre out of the rim, and that could have disastrous consequences. 
on this particular bike, you don't have a twist grip as on modern motorcycles. You have an air and a throttle. The air controls how much air goes into the carburetor. Normally, when you start the engine, you have the air slowed wide open. When it's wide open, it leaves the throttle easily accessible by the man holding the handlebars like that, and he can just work it like that. But to start off, the air is up close. Soon as it fires up, you gradually open the air slide, and the air is right round, leaving the throttle readily available. On the right-hand side, this is the brake lever, and by pulling on the right-hand brake lever, which is standard practice on all motorcycles, right from 1910 to now, front brake lever is always on the right-hand side. There, where by pulling up on the brake lever, we have the cycle, we have the cycle brake blocks. Okay, on this side we have a valve lifter on this side. If you want to stop the engine, you pull that in and it raises the exhaust valve and it shuts the engine down. Hello. Then we come into the clutch. We have the clutch on the left hand side, which is standard practice. Always have the clutch on the left hand side, which is 1922 to 1980. Always standard practice clutch on the left hand side. And this is magneto. Okay, you can advance and retard it on the magneto cable here. So we start off again. Left hand clutch, uh, hang on, valve lifter. Right, this one here is clutch. This one here is magneto. Advance and retard. Gear changing. There's three speeds on this gearbox up for one down for two and push on through for three. So we have three speeds and a kickstart, okay? Kickstart is here. Hey, where are you? Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Same to you. Okay, right. You can see that I'm leaning on the kickstarter now. Very, very difficult to turn this bike over. There we go, it's beginning to move now. Doesn't want to go at all actually. Right, so there we are. In the in the um, olden days, in fact it's still here. Underneath is a cap that you pour petrol into to it make the oil freer and then you could kick it over better.